the federal budget. Your business, your money, with KPMG in Canada. I'm Ann Romer. The federal budget will be tabled tomorrow afternoon in Ottawa. Joining us right now on 105.9 The Region with a look at what to expect in this year's fiscal blueprint is Brian Ernawine, Senior Advisor at KPMG in Canada's National Tax Centre. Brian, welcome to 105.9 The Region. Great to hear from you. Thank you for having me, Ann. A New York Times headline not long ago read this. Canada's federal budget goes from big secret to roadshows. It seems to be a comment on how Trudeau is breaking with tradition by giving out lots and lots of previews of tomorrow's budget. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's it's not entirely different from what we've seen in the past with these sort of calculated leaks, quote unquote, that uh, the government is usually sort of, I'll say, orchestrated in the day or days leading up to the budget. But it's certainly more deliberate. And I think... Uh, by my observation, the government would think they've done fairly well in getting two weeks of coverage rather than mm-hmm. perhaps two days. So in that respect, uh, they're, they're probably satisfied with the with the approach, and I'm not sure it's at odds with sort of the concept of budget secrecy, but I'm not sure it's really at odds with what's been happening the last few years anyway. KPMG has conducted Budget 2024 surveys. What is Canada, Brian, telling you this year? Well, it was a survey of, of, of business leaders across the country, and I guess there's a, a number of different lessons learned from that but but a couple of things I'll highlight are the, first of all on housing I mean it's it's topical you've seen in the responses of the the Trudeau government has come out so far in advance of the budget that they consider housing to be the top priority that's the same thing we heard from the business community not just that they were sort of concerned on behalf of uh, of individuals but actually it's a direct business concern that the cost of housing is affecting their ability to uh, attract and retain talent and and in order to, they're, they're either not getting the people they want or they're having to pay more uh, in order to to get those people and, and to keep those people and so uh, that that's the top priority other priorities include uh, uh, more more support for for, for research and, and development uh, and and in particular the green credits so-called that are the government has proposed in the last couple of years in response to the u.s and uh, measures the business community wants those to be advanced and and put in place so they can act on them. Interesting. On April the 7th, uh, an announcement was made by Trudeau. $2.4 billion will be going toward Canada's AI sector. What's the significance of that? Well, uh, obviously, AI is an emerging technology. And, and, and by most accounts will, will be a game changer for, for all of us. The, my understanding of the proposal that there's about $2 billion of the 2.4 that's to fund technology, techno- technological infrastructure, and another $400 million for other programs and initiatives for regional development agencies, for an AI data commissioner, and, and funding for skills training. So I think it has the potential to be significant. Certainly it's, it's a, a, uh, an important um, area of, in the new economy. What are you expecting in this budget that will be of use to Canadian businesses and to the Canadian population in terms of tax or lack thereof? Yeah, so a, a few different things. Just very quickly on the green credits, I'd mentioned that those those are have been announced, but they haven't all been legislated. Two are in a bill, budget bill that uh, is currently before the House, but uh, before the Parliament, but hasn't yet been enacted. Another two. Uh, were released in draft legislation in December, but uh, uh, haven't gone into Parliament yet. And so look for the budget to say something about the the, the progress there. And then the fifth one on a clean electricity tax credit uh, is, is still pending. There's also a carryover from last year's budget in relation to the alternative minimum tax, a personal tax that applies to or can apply to high-income individuals. That last year's budget proposed an, a number of tightening changes, and it generated a, a bit of reaction, especially in relation to... Uh, uh, its impact on charitable donations. And so that measure did not go forward in last year's budget bill, and we'll be looking to see what the budget this year uh, has, has, to, has to say about that. No new taxes on the middle class. We've seen in the last couple of days that both the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister have uh, been playing coy, I suppose. Uh, they both indicated that taxes won't be increased on the middle class, but they have both declined to answer whether or not taxes on higher income individuals or businesses uh, may, may be forthcoming. I'm, it's a personal view, but I'm, I'm personally doubtful the government would attempt to move forward with significant tax increases. We do have an election budget, or a budget, we have an election next year, excuse me, and so question whether or not the budget uh, within a year, perhaps, of an election would, would go forward on those changes. But we do know that the government's introduced special taxes, such as a surtax on financial institutions and the so-called luxury tax on cars, boats, and airplanes. And the consensus seems to be that it'd be hard enough for the government to meet its own current deficit target. 
even before all the pre-budget announcements that have been made in the last few days. So I don't think you can rule out new taxes on high-income earners or, or large businesses. Brian Ernawine, Senior Advisor at KPMG in Canada's National Tax Centre, thank you so much for joining us on 105.9 The Region. Thank you again for having me. Your Money with KPMG in Canada on 105.9 The Region. Listen live at 105.9 FM or online at 1059theregion.com.